Hello, Accelerated Math 6 7 students. We are working in Module 3, starting Lesson 4. Um, module 3, Lesson 4 is called o Ordering Integers and Other Rational Numbers, and that can be found on page 56 in my comp book. So I'm turning there now. Um, one, two, go. So, ordering integers and other rational numbers. Um, our goal for today is. Today we will work with ordering rational numbers, ordering, putting them in order. So when the teacher says, I want you to line up um, tallest to shortest, that's an order. If the teacher says, I want you to line up according to your birthdays in the months of the year, that would be an order. If your birthday is in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, that's an order. So today, we will work with ordering rational numbers. And we learned what rational numbers are yesterday, so that's ordering a lot of different types of numbers. It can get tricky. Hopefully, it will be fun. Question, how do you determine how to order the rational numbers? And some of you are going to say, oh, well, you have to read the directions, and it says order them from the least to the greatest, greatest to least. You are correct. It does usually tell you how to order them, but what I'm asking you is, how do you know what to do to do that? So if it says order the numbers from greatest to least, how do you do that? Okay, so I want you to be thinking about that during our lesson today. Um, some things that might help you out with that is understanding what greater than means. Um, greater than is a description of a number that has a larger value than another number. The symbol that we use looks like this. Okay, less than, however, is kind of the opposite of that. It is the description of a number that has a smaller value of another number, and the symbol looks like this. Now, a lot of kids over the course of my 18 years of teaching have had a hard time figuring out how they're going to remember which of the symbols is for less than and which of the symbols is for greater than. And something that I learned that was really, really helpful when I was teaching first grade is you have two hands on your body, okay? And one of your hands is your left hand, and one of your hands is your right hand. And so what I like to do when I'm trying to figure out greater than and less than is I use my hands to help me figure it out. My left hand is right here, okay? My left hand also conveniently, because it is my left hand, when I hold up my first finger and my thumb, it makes the shape of an L. So I learned early on in kindergarten and first grade that if I can make an L with my hand, that reminds me which hand is which. So I know all the time that this is my left hand because I can make an L. You can try to make an L with your right hand, but it's not an L. It's actually a J, especially if you turn your thumb up a little bit. But we're not worried about J's. We're not even talking about J's, so I'm going to remove that. So focusing again on this very lovely thing that if you have a left hand with a first finger and a thumb, you can make an L. Well, some of you are thinking, okay, Mrs. Nelson, I get it. That's your left hand. It can make an L. Well, in math, if you slightly turn it, you now have a less than symbol. Does everybody see it? There's your less than symbol. And the cool thing about that is that less than starts with an L. So here's the L turn it slightly, and now I have less, less than. So whenever I'm trying to remember which symbol is which, I go, oh, that's the less than symbol because it makes an L on my left hand. And then I naturally rethink, okay, well, the opposite is greater than, so that's going to be my right hand, and that makes the greater, hand, greater than sign. So just a little tool to help some of you who are still trying to figure it out and how to remember it. Use your hands. They're connected to you. You can't even take them off and put them down. Okay? They're there, so use them. All right. So, getting back to it, greater than, a description of a number that has a larger value than another number, the symbol is that way, uh, less than is the description of a number that has a smaller value than another number, and the symbol goes this way. You have it built on your hand. Lucky you. Okay, so an inequality statement is the next thing that we need to talk about. I'm pretty sure that almost all of you actually already know what an inequality statement is. You just may have never been taught that that's what it's called. So an inequality statement is a math sentence that uses the symbols to describe numbers compared to each other. So this is an inequality statement. We say that 7 is greater than negative 3, and that is correct. If you looked on a number line, let's draw one. I'll show you. 
So here's the number line right here. And we have zero, because we know where zero is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's seven on the number line. So this dot is sitting above the seven. One, two, three, negative three sits right here on the number line. So in comparison to each other, what is negative three compared to seven? Well, negative three compared to seven, th negative three is smaller. Seven compared to negative three, seven is bigger. And so we say that seven is greater than negative three, and there's the number line to prove it, okay? Another example of an inequality statement is negative nine is less than negative two. Now some of you are going, oh my gosh, Mrs. Nelson, you're not right. Well, let's check it out. I'm gonna erase this so it's not a distractor, and let's build it. So this is negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine sits right here on our number line. So it said negative 9 is less than negative 2. Well, negative 2 sits right here. Put a dot above negative 2 so you can see it. Put a dot above negative 9 so you can see it. Which one is bigger? Which one's closer to 0? Because the closer to 0 you get, the bigger the number is. So it is true statement. Negative 9 is less than negative two because negative nine is further away from zero. The further away from zero that you get on the left-hand side of the number line, the smaller the number becomes. So going back to our inequality statement, negative nine is less than negative two. If you're having trouble with this, figuring out which one these, these are, use the number line. It is very, very helpful because you can see it's a visual tool, it's a visual reminder that shows you how the answers work. Remember, the further away to the left on zero you go, the smaller the numbers become. The further away on the right of zero, the larger the numbers become. So if you remember to use this number line, and all of the practice problems that we're going to do, if, if, you're, if you're confused, draw it out. Use the number line. That's why I'm teaching you to use it, okay, because it's a very, very helpful tool. Um, we'll, I'll throw up some practice problems on the board um, for this lesson when we get to it. So um, that's all I have for you today. Let's go back to this again. Today we will work with ordering rational numbers. Um, ordering tells us greater than or less than, so that's pretty good. Um, how do you determine how to order rational numbers? Still thinking on that one. See if you come up with a good answer with it. And hopefully this makes sense to you. Okay? So, ordering integers and other rational numbers. That's it, my dears. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!